Cikaret Cibit ini tetap membuka peluang bagi teman-teman usaha kami, mitra usaha kami, UKM di sekitar kami, dan uh, kami juga akan tetap membuka peluang buat teman-teman yang ingin uh, memberikan modal, penyertaan modal ya dalam hal ini saham akan kita share untuk masyarakat. Uh, kami terbuka di 212 Mart Cibinong ini kapan saja Bapak Ibu berkenan tadi untuk membantu investasi kami. Kami silakan hadir karena kami standby di office kami di 212 Mart Cikarang. Selanjutnya per lembar harga saham kami adalah 500 minim penyertaan dua lembar dan maksimum untuk saat ini belum kami batasi karena kami masih memberikan peluang sebesar-besarnya untuk gerai kami berikutnya dan insya Allah kedepannya ada tiga gerai kami yang menjadi partner kami untuk segera kami bantu awal mewujudkan realisasinya 212 mat selanjutnya bagi Bapak Ibu jamaah yang ingin penyertaan modalnya di 212 mat Cikaret bisa menghubungi kami dengan Bu Haja Aida Yudi Asuti nomor telepon di bawah ini 081283667447 kami ulang 3 My name is Nicole Queen and I converted to Islam three years ago. I grew up in close to Louisiana, the border of Texas and Louisiana, and when I was eight years old, I moved south of Dallas and uh, grew up in a really small town there. Most people can't even find it on a map. We had about 48 kids in our graduating class, and so when we were growing up, we went to a fundamental Baptist church. So. Um, I kind of am very thankful to them because they built a really strong foundation of religion inside of me. And since the religions are so close, Islam and Christianity, um, it was like home away from home, like to come to Islam. My parents, um, they weren't really as religious. They were more free thinkers. Like they, they believe in God and they, um, they love God and they, you know, they're close with Him. But they, um, they're like typical. American people where they don't really live their life for God. Um, you wouldn't see it like in their daily routine, but my grandparents were definitely a lot more religious and so we had a pretty strong foundation already instilled in us. I was a photographer here in Dallas and most of the jobs that I got were at nightclubs because I was an event photographer. I was kind of like the paparazzi almost. We we had to take all the pictures that showed up in the magazines that kind of told you who was in this party and who was in that party as far as celebrities or athletes or any famous people that were in town. You can imagine like it was a really crazy lifestyle. Constant having to be at a party. Every Everything you did was at nighttime. You usually slept most of the day. And um, really not a peaceful lifestyle at all. Because I had still a little bit of that urge for God in me from from growing up like as a Baptist um, I felt a lot of emptiness like living that kind of life it was like daily you are surrounded by people that are greedy I guess I would say um, they are definitely kind of wound up in themselves and I was always talking to my friends like I want some peace like I want to feel like I have a better purpose you know that this isn't it I'm just around a party all the time. Life's a big party. And I definitely didn't feel like life was a big party. 
So um, they would always tell me, you have an awesome life. People want to be like you. You know, you get to go to things that people have never been to, and you get to be around all these producers and publishers and everything. But when you're around that all the time, it's kind of scary. You know, you look at people and you think, nobody cares about anything. Nobody cares about anything important. They don't even really know what's going on outside of their little bubble that they live in. So I used to kind of try to read my Bible. I would try to do a little soul searching um, and figure out like what is it that I'm looking for. And I would even, I would have nightmares at night, you know, just where I'm just searching for something and it's like I can't find it and I'm always running towards something. I knew people that were Muslim, you know, they didn't really practice Islam, you know, so I was around it, I was exposed to it a little bit, you know, uh, I had friends that didn't drink, I, ha I knew people that were just a little different, you know, and you would ask them, like, how come you don't want to go here or there, and they would say, oh, I don't hang out at those kind of places, I'm Muslim. And um, one night, after a photo shoot, I was going to meet up with my friends, and I also met, uh, who's now my husband, Hassan, and he was kind of going through the same soul searching too. When I met uh, Nicole, uh, we met in an outside like lounge and uh, I was practicing Islam but not completely the way I should be practicing Islam. And Nicole, she, uh, when I met her also, she was looking for peace in her life. So by the time when, when we met, we were able to relate to many things together toward better ourselves, to be a better person. We would talk to each other all the time about what we were looking for in life, about what we wanted to be, and how we wanted to be different than what we were now. I cannot talk to Nicole about uh, Islam, at the same time remind myself about my religion and what kind of person we need to be. So I was telling Nicole about uh, how to go to classes in the mosque and to learn more about Islam. And same time for myself, I tried to get more closer to my religion. He used to talk to me also about Islam. And so it was kind of like this Islam thing just keeps getting brought up around me. And the, the people who had the most discipline in their life and they had the most purpose in their life, seem to be these people, you know, they seem to kind of stand out amongst everyone else as you're all drinking, you're all partying, you're all dressing this way, but not us. And the more that I started learning about it, uh, the more addicted I became to it. I started watching uh, things on YouTube about Islam, uh, videos from Yusuf Estes, you know, who is a, a convert to Islam, and I would sit up all night. Definitely Nicole, she get me closer to my religion. Uh, watching her going through these changes and uh, for me not doing what I'm supposed to do, yeah, of course, she, she encouraged me to become a, a good Muslim. And uh, the more that I learned about the foundation of this religion and the more that I was like, this is written for me, this is what I need. I need something strong and I need someone to tell me, you have to stop living your life this way. If you want to have more purpose, here it is. When I started converting to Islam, uh, it was a long transition. Um, it seemed like a roller coaster at the time. It seemed like everything was happening all at once, and it was like a big blur. But now when I look back, I can see I made a pretty good transition. I took my steps. You know, The first step was I need to know what's going on with this faith. I need to know the foundations and the pillars and the basic belief system and I needed to make sure that it was something that I could actually believe in. I was excited when I uh, see her uh, very interested to learn about Islam and she want to be uh, changing her life to a better life. I, I get really excited and I try, you know, I give her the Quran to read it. When I started to read about their religion, um, the transition of my life happened without me even realizing it, you know. I started to change the way I thought about other people and the way I thought about the world. Um, so the way it affected my life was huge. Sometimes we didn't talk for a couple of weeks or a month, I mean, and then I found out she getting, she's still doing all these things and learning about Islam and uh, 
to the point where she wanted to go to Islamic country and she want to go and learn from the Muslim people, not just in books. And I wanted to go and see what it's like in a Muslim country really bad. I just had this urge to see what is it like to be around a bunch of Muslims, to be in a place where Muslim is the, the, the nation's religion. So I told her, of course, you can go to Jordan, and uh, I made it just available for her to go there and spend a month with my family. He called his mom actually right away, and she said, please come. I mean, they were so happy to have me come and visit, and I went by myself. Um, and I took a bunch of clothes that are typical for a hijabi girl to wear. And um, at the time, I thought of hijab as something um, something that you have to earn. Like, you have to study Islam for a long period of time before you can wear the hijab. Like, that's what I thought. I thought, I'm never going to get to that point. It's going to take me a long time to ever be like those women, you know. I thought it was like a rite of passage. And... So I went there with some scarves and some long skirts and hijab style clothing because I thought, okay, it's a Muslim country and everyone's going to be dressed like this, so I, I don't want to, you know, insult anybody. And when I went there, I saw 40% of the country doesn't cover, they don't wear hijab. I wanted to show re respect to the family that was hosting me, and the women in the family wore the hijab. Well, most of them wore it, and so I thought, well, I'll wear it when we go around town, and when we go out of the house, I'll put hijab on, so that I kind of blend in and don't draw extra American attention to myself when we're in this country. And so I started wearing it um, while I was there, and I would just wear it every day, and I was there for a month, and it got to where... I was excited to put it on, like, because it was new, and whenever I put it on, I got so many compliments, like, so many people would say, mashallah, you look beautiful, you look nice in the hijab, it looks better than you do without it, and I would think, oh my gosh, I didn't look good all those years, <laughs> so I would just keep wearing it every day, and when it was time to come back to Dallas, I was really nervous, because I didn't think I'd be able to take it off. And I was like, what am I going to do when I get home? I want to I wanna keep wearing this, but I haven't told anybody because I, I didn't decide to wear it when I left to go to Jordan. And when she came back wearing the hijab, uh, I was happy, but I didn't tell her that. So I came back and I, I told my friends and I told Hassan, um, I don't think I can take off this hijab. And they said, are you sure? I mean, it's a big step. What are you going to tell people? And I said, I don't know. I, I just can't take it off. And so I didn't. And I've worn it since then. I knew that a girl wearing hijab doesn't belong in a nightclub. And that's not respectful either to the other girls that wear hijab. Because you're making a public display of your faith. So if I bring God with me into a nightclub, then I'm not showing him respect. So I knew, okay, you've really done it now. Now you're going to have to stop shooting inside nightclubs. You're going to have to change your career. And this is a business that I had built from nothing and was now very popular and was the top person to hire to shoot these events. So um, I was really worried about that. And I started turning down more and more jobs that people wanted to hire me for that were inside of a club or a bar. Of course, uh, she changed uh, the way she sees things, uh, her clothes, her friends, her job. I went back to what I loved, and I said, I'm going to do what I was born to do, and I'm a photographer. I've been a photographer since school. I mean, this is what I've always done, and this is what I did when I was a kid. So I made a new portfolio. I just started from the ground up. I had done it before, so I was like, I can do this again. And I made a clean portfolio, and none of the images that I would do ever again were going to be women scantily clad, you know, and pictures of, of people drinking and partying and things like that. And so I made a new portfolio of happy things like weddings and charity events and political events. So I was still shooting what you would consider celebrities, but in their respective times, in the daytime, not at night when they're 
kind of letting the claws come out. So I changed my business and it grew from there. And now with my hijab on and my new way of shooting and my new, my new kind of outlook on photography now, um, I'm busier than I ever was when I was just flaunting myself. So I don't know if that's a gift from God or what, but my business has grown double since then, and I'm thankful for that. And everything that I shoot now, I feel proud of. I feel like I wouldn't be embarrassed to show this to my grandmother. When I started to get closer with God and I started to have more respect for myself, um, covering up was like God is saying, since you, since you have left this life that most people want to come to me, I'm going to give you back your virtue. After Nicole converted to Islam, she and Hassan found a deeper appreciation for each other, fell in love, and were married. But Nicole was faced with more new challenges that converting to Islam often brings, including an awkward period with her parents and family. When we were getting married, they didn't know how to feel. Um, they didn't know, like, is she doing this because of, of that man? It, you know, they didn't really know my husband that well. Um, and they were questioning everything. Like, did she do this for this guy? They kind of took it really hard, and it was a struggle for them. But um, so when we got married, I think that that was really hard for them, and they felt like, we can't support this, you know, we, we don't want to be there and we don't want to support this. And I think that now they probably, maybe they wish that they wouldn't have been that way because now they love my husband. They think he's great, you know, he loves to do everything that they want to do. I used to think that one day she's going to say, I'm, I'm not going to be Muslim anymore. This is too complicated for me. I used to think that more in the beginning of our relationship, you know, like when right after we get married and but now I feel more comfortable about it. I feel she has a strong uh, belief about her religion and she's not gonna just drop the ball and walk away. <laughs> so this is too complicated for me. I feel like we are definitely a team when it comes to keeping each other with our religion. We, we have to keep each other on the, the right path. And I, I think that. that that's kind of one of the big purposes of, uh, of a Muslim married couple is that you keep each other on this direction um, whenever we're facing different challenges because you are going to face challenges living in, in America um, and then trying to live as a Muslim. So we help each other kind of resist the temptations that we face. Um, we remind each other of what we're trying to do and what we want for our children one day, inshallah. And I can look at him and tell at a moment when he is having a struggle, even if he doesn't say it, and he can do the same for me. And so it's just that ability to know and love each other that much that you, you want to see the other person as a successful Muslim. You know, you want him to love Islam as much as you do and you look at him and think like I want to feel as passionate as he does you know so we look at each other and push ourselves in the right direction This is the main foyer area for the Islamic Association of North Texas. Uh, this is where I first began my Islamic classes. I would come every Sunday, I would go up the staircase right there to learn about the foundation of Islam. Um, it was about five months later that I took my Shahada in the Imam's office here at the Richardson Mosque. Um, I've become like a member of the family here and this is where me and my husband come for our prayers. Eventually, the Islamic Association of North Texas is going to grow into an Islamic village. They're going to be adding shops, restaurants, and educational institutions. The community here is growing very rapidly. Daily, we probably don't live the typical life of a Muslim couple. We're usually not 
home together having a big meal every night and things like that. We usually have something that we have to work on. I would say it's a little different than the typical Muslim family who's home together a lot and who kind of has like, it's a little easier lifestyle that they have compared to ours. Everything that we do, we make a decision like, is this what God would want us to do? Is this where he'd want us to be? I love barbecue. So we buy halal chicken and we have barbecue out on the patio and we invite friends over. We take the right choices by who our friends are. We take the right choices about where we're going to buy our barbecue chicken at, you know. Um, but we still do it. I mean, it's just a, it's a way of life, but it doesn't mean you don't have one. Hi there. Hey. Welcome to our ranch. Thank you so much. Thank Looks you for like having, having us. Looks like you're ready to ride. Yeah, yeah. we're ready to go. Well, let's go find the horses. All right. Right far. I don't miss out on anything that a Southern girl would get to do, you know. Like, I do everything that I would have done before. Um, I just find a way to do it. And so I can still be Muslim, and I can still go horseback riding with my husband um, out at a ranch. You know, we do that frequently. I think that in Islam, something that sets it apart from other religions is the ease of it, the simplicity. And I know that may sound strange to some people um, because they would think Islam is not easy. Look at how difficult your life is, you know, with this religion and how challenging it is. But the simplicity that I'm speaking of is when you need to make a decision and when you're going somewhere and when you're buying clothing to wear and when you when you walk out the door Islam helps you to make the decision to respect yourself I think that Islam takes you and your personality and it washes it off when I became a Muslim it was like somebody gave me a bath it was like um what Christians uh, follow is a baptism. I think that in Islam, like I said, it's kind of like you wake up from the nightmare that you were living, and you get to wake up and live the life that you were meant to live. So besides the photography, um, I tried to give back a little bit to the community and to the people um, about converting to Islam and about being an American Muslim. So. Um, what I thought of was all of the different challenges that I had faced when I was converting and wanted to create a website that would help people who were also going through those same difficulties. So one of the biggest challenges that I faced when I was converting was finding my identity. Um, as an American Muslim, you don't really feel a lot like an American anymore. Um, you feel like you don't quite fit in with your friends and family the way that you used to. When you're also on the other side as a Muslim, you're still uh, not the same as they are, not the same as a person from a Muslim country, and you may not look or act the same way that they do. So you kind of feel like, where do I belong? So I made another site, and it's a blog page uh, that helps 
define a little more of the Muslim American identity. So I have articles and stories and videos on there um, just describing who we are as American Muslims because my goal with that site is to give us a more positive representation and to make it to where the first thing that someone thinks of when they think of a Muslim is going to be completely different than what they think now. I find that uh, here in America, I know that people think um, it must be hard to be a Muslim that's an American living in America. And I did find out what it's like to be treated different, to be like, to be looked at by your own people as somebody that's foreign. And I am very proud to be American. I'm all about being an American and being a Muslim. Uh, this is a faith. It's a religion. It's, it's not a race. It's not, you know, what color of skin I am. It's not anything like that. It's just a faith that I follow. It's a, a lifestyle that I live. So um, I kind of feel bad for people when, they, when all that they know is completely wrong from what we stand for. Assalamu alaikum, sisters. Thank you so much for coming. And so I really devote a lot of time and a lot of energy to speaking out to people about being an American Muslim and about how this is a different aspect. This is a different aspect of Islam than they've ever seen. You know, this is people who only know and only live the faith. I converted uh, to Islam three months ago and um, I came today to hear Nicole's lecture uh, just regarding life without Islam as a reminder, you know, what, what life was without it. Um, everything that she said, you know, I couldn't relate, you know, because I understand what cultural norms there are here in the West um, and, and how it contrast with, you know, the ideals of the religion. My message would be to people when they want to learn about our faith um, is to just listen and look at how we live our lives, like on a daily basis. So um, I wouldn't talk about the differences and I wouldn't focus on, well, you believe this and you're wrong and this is the right way. And I, I don't talk like that about Islam. When I talk to people, I like to show them um, the simplicity of it. I like to tell people all of the things that are so similar to what they're already believing in their lives. and show them how the things that they face and the challenges that you face in life, um, there are answers for everything, you know, and there are guidances for everything to make it easy on yourself and to help you to make the right decision about common things that we have to do in life, about getting married, about how to treat your family, about what you do for a living, uh, raising your, your children, you know, everything. There is a guidance in this faith to help you to be the best person that you can be in whatever you do. If it's your career, if it's how you are with your friends, if it's the things that you do for fun, the way that you socialize, everything about your life, um, this faith has an answer for it and able to give you the, the chance to be the best that you can and to do the best with your life and to make the most of it and to live for a greater purpose. One of the biggest messages that people don't really notice and that isn't projected is that it is simple answers to your life's problems.